Alright, All right, welcome to the second half of the night, which is based on rails. Uh, this talk was originally intended just to be a standalone, and then we decided, no, there's a lot more that a whole bunch of noobs would be interested in learning. Uh, and the original title was Noob to Deployed, but uh, Ryan invented the new title, Zero to Hero. Uh, my name is John Barton, I'm a web developer, and I run a little rail site called alltimetop5.com. Uh, it was my first Rails app, and it took me longer than I expected. So Zero to Hero, well, the reason I want to do this talk is I started coming to the Ruby group about nine months ago, and I found I'm hanging out with a bunch of really smart dudes, and I don't understand anything they're saying. I'm glad I stuck it out, because I get it now, but in the early days, I was just sitting there quietly. Hello, I'm new at Rails, and... Uh, no, I haven't deployed any apps to production. It's actually the most difficult transition um, going from knowing nothing to having a live app in the wild. It's kind of horrible when you get used to being an expert in your language and then going back to knowing nothing. It's a bit of a bad feeling, so I wanted to convince you guys it's all right, push through, it's, uh, it's well worth it. I did have some kind of really hippie idea, but I decided to cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> so this is not very much of a technical implementation. It's a bit Marbo, the Constitution, the vibe. I wanted to go through what is, what is Rails, why should I be learning Rails, and, and how do I go on this journey? So Rails is an opinionated web framework. Uh, it's extracted from a bunch of apps made... Uh, by a company called 37 Signals. The inventor's David Hanemeyer Hansen. He's a Danish guy and he's a bit of a tool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but he's a really smart guy and he has a lot of opinions on a lot of things. Um, what I mean by opinionated web framework is that there are many, many ways to do web application development. So he took his opinion on what was the best and built into the framework. So you just, if you go along with Rails and you share the opinion, you'll find it's a very, very good framework. The biggest opinion in there is model view controller. So anyone who's doing a lot of object-oriented code will be familiar with this idea of models, views, and controllers. The separation of concerns is all very pretty. It is very hard to not write model view controller code in Rails. It tells you where your file should be. It tells you the format they should look. It, it, it just basically dictates a whole bunch of convention over configuration, which when you're used to doing things your own way, it, it's really horrible giving out the control, but once you get used to it, it's just, it's apples all the way through. You just start going, oh, I need to look for a model. It's in this directory. Oh, I need to fiddle with my views. I'll go here. You know, my HTML is always going to be in the one directory. My uh, models will be in the same place. They'll talk to the database in the same way. It's really good. My core favorite thing about Rails is active record. It's the object relational mapping component of Rails, and it just takes care of the shit you are really sick of doing in your day job. Writing SQL queries that are just the same generic create, read, update, delete, um, loading up associated classes depending on their relationship. I've got some code here from All Time Top 5, actually. The core idea in the site here are these lists. And this is everything but the code, like the specific uh, methods that you'd have. So up here, I'm saying I've got a list. It's, it's an active record object. It has many list items and it has many comments and it belongs to a user. That's all you need to write and it will take care of the foreign key uh, mapping back and forth between users, list items and comments. It also refers to itself because you can create a list that rebuts another list because the idea is the top five lists and you disagree with someone because your opinion is infinitely superior. So you'll create one that responds to that and then so on and so on and so on. You want tagging? It's one line. Um, Acts as taggable, and in the case, this just makes all my tags lowercase. You want validation? Well, it has to have a title. So I've got validates presence of title. This is basically a classic DSL for taking care of web app rubbish that you're doing over and over and over again. So why should you be programming Rails? The first thing is the productivity boost. You, it takes a while to ramp up to it. But once you get it, you're going to be churning out code a lot faster. I keep telling friends who are building apps in PHP or .NET, yeah, I could do that in a weekend. I could do that in a weekend. I'm not going to do it in a weekend because I have better things to do, but I could do it in a weekend. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
The other big thing is maintainability. Because there is a convention for everything, you don't have to wonder where that half wit in the corner of your office has put that one file that's doing that <laughs> thing to the object and it's creating that bug and people are screaming at you. You don't have to worry. It's in your model's directory. It's got a name. It's always named. It's the same name as your table. You never get confused. I'm looking at that. What the hell is that? What's this? You're going to know where it is. So you get this massive productivity and maintainability boost. So you build your app quickly, and then over time you want to add new things, you just know where everything is. So you just go to it and you build it, and you build on it quickly. Now a lot of people are going, well, I can't use Rails in my day job. I'm a .NET developer during the day. I work for mycareer.com.au. I can't use Rails at all. But I've got my side projects. But it is still worth learning to use uh, code in Rails anyway. Um, because there are all these opinions on the best practice like model view controller and it's very hard to not do things right, you get very used to doing things the right way. So then when you come back to your day job and you go, why, why is this class here? Why is that there? Why is this a big mess of spaghetti code? I thought go-tos were left in the 80s, but you're going to find it. <laughs> so it's a great way to learn the best practices and then apply it in your languages. I found the same with Ruby. Uh, the block syntax that uh, Pete was talking about before you have the same thing in .NET, but it's a lot uglier. So when I tried to learn it in .NET, I just couldn't be bothered. It was just hard. I look at it and I go, what on earth is this doing? I started coding with blocks in Ruby, and then I go back and go, oh, that's the ugly way of doing things right. <laughs> so I, you, you'll become a better programmer for Ruby on Rails, even if you're not using it in your day job. So how should you go about learning Rails? Well, <coughs> you should just get in there and start doing things. It's really easy. There's a bunch of... Uh, what they call generator scripts that will create a bunch of useless classes that you'll never use once you're um, good at Rails, but uh, the best way to get started. Uh, DHH created a bit of a famous video of creating a blog in 10 minutes, um, but you're going to find it's not that easy. You, you'll, you'll start with the blog example, and then you'll start changing things, and you're going to hit a wall. Um, that wall is what, yeah, everything in Rails has what they call the Rails way. So there is Perl has their uh, more than one way to do it, and for obscure reasons, half of them are broken. <laughs> Python has there is one and only one way to do it. Rails has this idea there are, Ruby and Rails have these ideas that there are multiple ways of doing things, but there is one really pretty obvious way. And the only problem is it takes you a while to learn this. It's, um, it's like a, a German with, it's uh, what are you thinking about? And it, until you really get English, you're not going to be elegant with it. Everyone here has gone through this exact transition. It's, it's rough at first, and if you start coming to one of these meetings normally when we're not doing a noob night, you're going to sit there and you'll be really, really confused. But it is well worth sticking it out. I learned a lot as a .NET programmer. I'm building web apps. I'm having fun building web apps again. I'm doing it quickly. And um, I've met a, a great community of uh, other developers who you know, will do anything they can to help. And yeah, who am I? I'm John. Any questions? Now, this is very technically light on because we're going to have a bunch more five-minute talks that get into all the details that make this kind of my favorite framework. Thank you. <laughs>